Hey guys, welcome back to another update video. Today we're going to be taking a look at our newest update to Amped 5. We're always committed to improving 5 for our users. And you'll see in this update we've made a lot of changes to already existing features, improving the usability of them and making 5 a much more efficient software to use. We're going to start the video off with a new feature, which is Chroma upsampling. And then from there, we'll take a look at some of the improvements we've made to already existing filters. Okay, I'm first going to introduce you to one of our new filter settings within the video loader, and that is Chroma upsampling. Now, in the past, we have always used a accurate rounding for Chroma upsampling. If you've not heard of this term before, I'll quickly explain it. So most videos that we come across are recorded in YUV420 or YUV422 pixel format. And this means that some of the color information in that video is discarded during the compression within the encoding process. So once that video is going through that encoding process, and compression is taking place, some of the color information is removed. What this means is when we decode a video to play, there's some missing information that needs to be calculated and interpolated to ensure that we recreate the full frames as they should be. In the past, Five has always done this using a accurate rounding, but this is quite a computational intensive process. And what we've found is with 4K video, which is becoming more popular, because that upsampling is taking quite a bit of time to do, it's making the video playback much slower than it's intended to be. So here I've got a 4K video. And if I play this now, you'll see it's still playing, but it's a little bit slow. So it's not playing at that 30 frames per second, which it's intended to play at. And that's because five is having to calculate the chroma upsampling. So what we've enabled is to change that upsampling from our accurate rounding, which we've always used in the past to the standard rounding. Now the standard rounding is the standard that's used within the FFmpeg multimedia framework and the calculations here are going to be less intensive so we can get faster playback so all i'm going to do is change this here in my filter settings apply that and now when i play my video you're going to see that we're going to get that 30 frames per second playback speed which we desired in this next part of the update we've made bringing evidence into five a much more streamlined and efficient process. You might notice if we go to our program options that we've now got a new tab in here, which is the import tab. And you can see we've got quite a few new settings here that we can discuss. So the first one is auto rename chains and the auto rename chain format. So you can choose to automatically name the chains based on the file's name. So here you can see, use the full media name, no extension. You can choose to use the media name, first eight characters or last eight characters. And you can have it to always ask when you replace a loader we can mux matching video and audio files and we can import multiple images. So let's take a look at the auto rename when we bring in evidence. So if I bring these two video files into five, you'll see that in the history panel, these have been renamed automatically based on what they were named in windows. 
Okay, the next option that we'll take a look at is the automatic of the video and audio muxer. So let's say you've got your video file and your audio file separate from your export. If we drag and drop both of these into five, five will recognize that they're from the same file and it'll bring them in and automatically add that audio video muxer for you. Finally, let's take a look at bringing in multiple images. So the old functionality of dragging and drop multiple images into five would be that they would be automatically loaded into a sequence loader. But if we do it now, I've got a few images here in this folder and I'm going to drag and drop them straight into five. And five is saying import multiple images. And now we get to choose how we want this to behave. So we can group all these images together into a folder. We can use the old functionality of bringing them into a sequence loader if they're all from the same sequence or we can bring them all into separate chains so let's say i want to group these into a folder so now you can see that the images are all grouped into one folder ready for me to analyze next we're going to take a look at our new tools menu so within five there are several tools that we use often to help us in our analysis of evidence and we've grouped these tools together now in their own drop down so if we take a look at the five interface at the top we've got our different menu options and you'll see that we've got this new one now which is labeled tools and in there we've got the copy and verify tool the convert dvr dvr screen capture and the advanced file info so these are the most common tools that we use to help assist us during our analysis and you'll be able to find them all in this new menu from now on. Next we've made improvements to our link filters. We've enabled a drag and drop feature from our history chains to the filter settings itself. So the way this works, here you can see I've got my three videos that I want to link together. So I've got my three videos ready to link. And for this example, I'm going to link them using the multi-view filter. And what we've enabled now is the drag and drop of the filters from the history chain straight into the multi-view filter settings. So for example, for my first video here, I've got the change frame rate. I'm going to place that as my first input. And then the next video I can drag and drop and the third one. And that allows me just to quickly put these videos into that multi view filter. The next feature update I'd like to show you is with our range selector. So with the range selector now, we've enabled some keyboard shortcuts that can quickly put in a in and an out of your selected range. So using this video as an example, all I'm going to do is I'm going to start my range from frame 100. So rather than going to select frames, range selector, and then uh, setting that filter up, I can simply just press the Alt and I key. And that's going to put in a range selector with my first frame selected at range 100. I can do the same for my out as well. So if I want my out frame here, again, I can just do Alt and O and that'll put my out input on my last frame as 230. If I'm not happy with my first frame, I can press my Alt and I key again and it's gonna take me back to that uh, frame 100 but I can now go back and see frame zero. So I can change my input. Let's say I want it just before he comes into view and I can make a new in selection. The same goes with the out frame. If I'm not happy with that out selection, Alt and O, and then change where I want that new range to finish. 
The next improvements we made are to the drop and the frame size filters. We've added drop down menus to both of these filters, which allow you to choose from default size options. So first we'll take a look at our crop filter. So in edit crop, you'll see that we've added this size presets option. And in here you will see all the default size options that you have available to you that are that are smaller than the current image size. So our current image resolution is 867 by 544. And it's going to show us all the default size options below that. So for example, NTSC, which is 720 by 480. If I select that size option, you'll see my crop uh, selection is already made at that size. So then I can place that where I want to crop the area to and click apply. The next one then I wanted to show you was the frame size. So still in the edit category, we've got frame size. Again, we've got size presets and we've got print presets. What you'll notice with the print presets is that you've got the sizes there and you've got the DPI that's required to print at that size. Following on from the previous update, We've also made some updates to our video rider. Now, the first thing that we've done to the video rider is that we've separated our video codecs and video containers into their own separate dropdowns. This will just make it easier for you to choose your format and codec when you're saving your videos out. You might notice that we've also got an audio codec option now. So if your videos does contain audio, you can choose how that is going to be compressed. Finally, we've added a new lossless codec. This is the uncompressed RGB. So now within five, you've got two lossless codecs. You've got the uncompressed RGB where you're not going to get any compression. And then you've got the FFV1 codec that was introduced in the last update. This one does have compression, but it's still a lossless codec. It's perfect for archiving. But you will be able to verify your processors by comparing the two lossless codecs together. I hope you enjoyed the update video and until next time, take care.